Hello and welcome back to the second part of the i4 Designer tutorial series. In this video, we'll continue using the project created previously and focus on actually building the i4 SCADA visualization. Last time we've created a new i4 SCADA platform project using i4 Designer's control center. Let's open this new project. The i4 Designer project page is the place where most of your work will be happening. This is the place where the actual visualization design is done, as well as all necessary project configuration. For a bit of perspective, let's take a look on what tools we have available. Since we've opted for the i4 SCADA platform project, the SCADA tab is open by default, presenting the drawing canvas of our visualization. Next to it we have the toolbox and properties panel. Here we have access to all our available components and their properties. Further left, the vertical menu helps us access other important areas of the designer – the settings panel, the signals panel, the builds panel, the pages and navigation views. The top menu provides the expected editing options like undo, redo, positioning options like move to top or to bottom, and clipboard operations like cut, copy and paste. Also here we can toggle on or off the canvas grids, rulers or guidelines. Since the best way to understand this amazing tool is by example, let's start creating the visualization we're looking for. Let's define two pages in our project. We'll use one page for our SCADA visualization and one for an alarm viewer. Next, we need to handle the navigation between these two pages. i4 Designer has a complex and flexible navigation system based on navigation files. Let's create one. The navigation file lists our two existing project pages. Let's first order them and then customize them. I'm going to call the first navigation link, pointing to the SCADA page, the Overview Dashboard. Let's also tweak the colors of this navigation link a bit. I'm selecting a color for both the foreground text and icon and for the hover effect of the same elements. We can use the color picker, but once we have our color, we can just copy-paste the color code into other properties. Let's also add an icon to the navigation link. We could use an image as an icon, but we can also use one of the predefined icons. I'm gonna pick the dashboard icon for this first link. Next, I'm gonna repeat a similar customization on the second navigation link, pointing to the alarm viewer page. We can see our results in the right side of the navigation file in the preview area. Now let's start building our visualization layout. I'm gonna start with an image background. We could use the canvas handles to size the background properly, but it's easier using the transform properties when you know the right values. Notice that I'm zeroing the X and Y values to place the background at the top right corner of the canvas. Using the URL property, I'm gonna select the image I want to use as a background. I have the image on my hard drive, so I'm loading it into the project, then applying it. I'll also make it cover the entire background frame. Next, I'm gonna use a label component as the main visualization title. We'll call it Power Station Alpha. The text color should be white for a good contrast. Then I'll make the background a dark and transparent color. Make the text bigger since it's a title and align it to the right side. Then size and position the whole label, again, I'm using the X and Y properties to accurately position the component on the canvas. Let's make the navigation. Using the navigation file property, I'll select the navigation file created in the previous step. The navigation links are applied just like in the preview section of the navigation file. I'll find a light transparent background for the navigation bar and center the link text. Let's also add a bright separator between the navigation links. Next, I'm gonna adjust the icon padding and the text size and proceed with resizing the navigation bar to contain everything properly. Then I'll position the whole bar inside the label component we've used as a title. Next, let's make the panel that will contain the rest of our components. I'll name it Overview Dashboard. Make the header text white and the panel background dark and a bit transparent in order to have enough contrast while still being able to see the nice background picture. Then adjust the title size and position to match the design. 
I'm also going to use a dashboard icon in the title and scale the header to fit the bigger text size. I'll use the transform properties to match the panel scale with the title label and position it accurately. Now onto the contents of our dashboard. Again, the label component will act as a section title for the first set of components, the weather station. This section will show us the weather status on our alpha power station. I'll use the weather icon in the label and place it as a section title. I'm also adding a line right below it to make sure it stands out. Next, let's display the temperature outside of our power station. I'll start with an icon symbol to help with the visual identification of the displayed values and also to show you that we have really nice icons. Choose the temperature symbol and make it orange for enhanced contrast and also easier visual identification. To the right of our temperature symbol, I'll add a signal value component. This is the component that will display the value of the outside temperature once everything is done. For now, i4Designer will provide a default simulated value for all components, but we'll be changing that to actual SCADA signals a bit later. I'm using the palette and transform properties to visually adjust the signal value so it matches our theme. It's always nice to show the measurement unit for the values we display, so let's add yet another label component to do just that. I'm gonna make it display degrees Celsius and style it like the signal value added previously. Now let's repeat the same set of components for displaying the wind speed and humidity level. Once the weather station section is done, let's create another section in our dashboard to show us the status of the wind turbine powering our station. We'll use the clipboard to duplicate existing components and create the turbine low display. Below this status section, we'll make a new section for controlling the power station. This time, I'll use button components to interact with our turbine. The first button will start the turbine, so I will apply the success CSS class to make it green. The next button will stop the turbine, so I'll use the Danger CSS class to make it red. Finally, the third button will put the turbine into maintenance mode, so I'll make it yellow using the Warning CSS class. Now that we have our main dashboard components ready, I can go on and add the representation of the wind turbine we're focusing on. I'll use the windmill energy graphics symbol available in Knife for Designer. I'll also use more line components to add some extra visual traces that indicate the dashboard's connection to our wind turbine in the Alpha power station. With all this, our first project page is done, and we are ready to move to the second one. I'm going to use the Pages menu to access the Alarm Viewer page and start copying the components that will be identical on both pages, the image background, the title, navigation bar and panel.
I'll rename the panel Alarm Dashboard and change its icon. Next, I'll drop the Alarm Viewer component inside the panel. This time, I'll use the keyboard arrows to place it into the right position. We'll leave the Alarm Viewer at its defaults, since the i4 Designer i4 SCADA platform will connect it to our SCADA alarms once we build the project. Our simple visualization is now designed, but as you might have noticed, there is no signal connected to any of our components. We'll handle it right now. Since we are building an i4 SCADA visualization, we would want to use the i4 SCADA signals. For this tutorial, we're gonna use the i4 SCADA demo database. Using i4 SCADA Studio, we can export the signal configuration that we already have and import it in i4 Designer. Once that's done, we now have all our SCADA signals in our i4 Designer project, so we can assign whichever signal we want to our components. The signal name property of our components allows us to visually select one of the signals now available in the project. We could go deeper and use i4 Designer's built-in signal simulation service, which would allow us to simulate any value in our design page, but that's a topic for a future video. And that's it! Our simple SCADA visualization is complete. Of course, there are many more things we could do to make our project smarter, prettier or more complex, but for the purpose of this demonstration, it should be enough. In the next and last part of this tutorial, we'll look on how to actually deploy and run the visualization project we've just created, so hold on tight and I'll catch you in the next one!